The market closed down for the week. I got the technicals that you need to see for the next week. I am Dr. Stock, Doctor of Education, and I once took a trip out to Ellis Island on a boat. I got passed by another boat on the way over there full of what looked like tiny little white rocks. The person next to me said, those aren't rocks, that's the tooth fairy. I swear to you, that is a Dr. Stock original, and I had no clue what kind of joke I was gonna tell. I'm only saying this because I have no clue where in the world this stuff comes from in the first place. It's probably not even all that good, but I have fun with it. Let's get into the technicals. We're gonna start off with SPY, QQQ. IWM is really super interesting. Actually, they all are in my opinion. That's why I'm sharing them with you. Bitcoin, Tesla, NVIDIA, and then I have a treat for you guys at the very end of this one. Technicals that I haven't shared anywhere else yet. So let's get into, into the SPY track and the S&P 500. Look and see what we're getting here as of today's close. So we actually had a stop down at the 50 period moving averages two days ago. Yesterday, nice high wick down below them. Today, we got that bounce that I was talking about. I said shorts could possibly be covering and, uh, you know, have a nice little rise after this kind of sold off part of the week that we had. And well, that's what happened today. And it was nice to see we are down below the five and 13 EMAs. That's something that can show that we still have some downward pressure to go. We are down below 50 on the RSI as well. Next week, I'm telling you, it is in the hands of the Fed and also in the hands of the earnings, especially where big tech is concerned. I said that in my morning video. And if you have not seen my video from last night, uh, the, the thumbnail says this is serious. Please go watch it because that one's about the entire month of August, not just what we could expect to start off with next week as the end of the week gets right into August. So over to QQQ, what's that looking like? Let me collapse that so we can see this better. We actually have a nice little indecisive candle. We are down below the 50 period moving averages, the EMA in red, the SMA in blue. We're down below both of them on the daily chart. Now, mind you, just like with the SPY, we're above the 200, still in bullish territory. The RSI is starting to turn back around, but it is still, my goodness, hold on, that's from a different time frame. Uh, still below 50. On the weekly chart, it's above 50, so we can go ahead and take a look at that one. Uh, but that's what that was. So we are still below 50, although we are getting just a little bit of an inflection off of that, maybe starting to rise, but not until we cross 50, because over here we peaked out at right about 50, flat line right along it. If we're able to go back up over that and overtake the 50 period moving averages up here on this part of the chart, we could possibly recover fairly well. And like I said, the Fed and earnings, those are the two things that we're looking at for next week. We have Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft. Man, I always forget one of them when I try and talk about them like that. NVIDIA, remember, doesn't report until the end of August. Uh, now, mind you, all of them, I think, are going to have a significant impact on the market, especially where NVIDIA is concerned. So as I talk about big tech, understand that their references to NVIDIA and how they're handling the AI space is going to have direct impacts to what we see with NVIDIA's price as well. Now, IWM, whoa, that's quite a chart. Here's the hourly chart, and I wanted to share this with you because, well, take a look at it. You could argue that what we have is like a, a bull pennant going on right now. Uh, honestly, I really like this part that we have for the ascending triangle pattern part of this one. And if this is part of it is any true whatsoever. Actually, I really like this part. Like I said, I think we could see a break up to 234 in the near future. Now, mind you, these bottoms keep on squeezing up and that peaks out all the way into Friday the 16th of August, which is a major options expiration. Well, that's the monthly options expiration date that we have that we're looking for for August. We want to keep this bottom trend line for support. And we have this area up top 224 to 226. We just keep on smacking those two values or somewhere in between and getting rejected and sending back down. But as the bulls keep on putting pressure on from the bottom of this and the bears are struggling to hold that line at the top of it, that's one that that pressure can punch through and really have some bullish momentum coming out of the top of that, especially as we settle down on the daily chart for IWM for the Russell 2000 stocks. Now into Bitcoin, what's Bitcoin doing? Well, actually, let's zoom out to go back to where we had the all time high because we have one, two, three, where is it at? There's three, four, five, six touches now along this trend line that I have drawn on here for you. And these two times that we actually poked up above it, we got re we got rejected at the $72,000 level. If we're able to overtake this trend line, we could see that rise to 72. And if we break 72, in my opinion, we're putting on new all-time highs, especially with this strong movement that we had, a little bit of a resting period, strong buying pressure from down here. I do think it's going to take help from the indices to make that happen. 
We will see what the weekend brings. If we're able to go up over this Saturday, well, later even today, Saturday, Sunday, we'll see where that gets us to on Monday as well. And uh, are we able to over to, are we able to break this resistance coming down through the top of this? And if so, 72 is probably that next line that we get to look for. Now, mind you, 68 has its own resistance there. 70,000 has its own resistance. 70,000, not bad. But I, I will say that we seem to cap out even harder against 72,000 than what we'd have for that round number psychological resist at 70,000. So there's some history to it. 72,000 is stronger. So over to NVIDIA. What's NVIDIA looking like? Well, for NVIDIA, uh, well, we had indecision on this candle. And then on today's candle, as we're looking at the daily chart here, we are still, we got a candle closed below the 50 SMA and EMA with the five crossing that. Right now, it's actually looking still kind of bearish on a daily basis for NVIDIA. Now, mind you, I would absolutely love, love, love to see this thing down in the two figures sometime soon. As a matter of fact, the further this thing gets crushed down on negative sentiment, the more bullish I become on it, uh, because I think that uh, if we had some really negative sentiment for a, a rock star champion company like NVIDIA, even with a little bit of softness, it, temporarily speaking, in the AI space, as companies are figuring out what to do to actually turn this into revenue and turn it into profit, besides just a just a, a profit drag, if you will, something that's eating up the capital in the meantime. So as companies get that figured out, I think it's really going to uh, change the game. And I think NVIDIA is poised to change right along with it. I think that they can actually move fairly nimbly with their, their flat structure that they have uh, as to, in terms of their uh, their bureaucracy. There's not very many levels to it, especially for a company that's a multi-trillion dollar company at this point in time, probably back down under three trillion for market cap, probably in the twos, let's, let's see, it's on here, 2.78 trillion. So it still rounds up to three. What about Tesla? Well, at Tesla, I still have my semi-technicals. I'm going to refresh these uh, going into next week. Uh, but I did just want to put that, this out here. This is the weekly chart, by the way. We are up above 50 on the RSI. Let's go down to the daily chart. That's the one that I want to talk about for right now. Just to see how the technical has played out for the week. Look at this free rise area that we had. You can see that price action as we got down into it. We did rise up, but came back down. And then uh, that was two days ago. That was on Wednesday. Uh, and then uh, that free rise area on Thursday we stayed right inside there getting resistance even though we have that gap to fill up here and then today not quite able to get out of there uh, but we still are holding on to this support area down here from 210 to 216 with that 50 period ema coming right in at about 213 and that that wick just couldn't quite make it there today during the regular trading hours so uh, where does that put us at on a momentum basis well the rsi is down below 50 on the daily chart for Tesla. And like I said, we could fill that gap, especially if we find support down here by the 50 EMA. We're gonna have to watch and see what happens with that momentum. Like I said, the rest of big tech, what the Fed does, especially with what the Fed does. I think the Fed is the bigger catalyst for Tesla, although it can certainly be supported by what we hear from the other big tech earnings and the other companies that report earnings as well. So guys, if you stuck around this long, I have that treat for you. Uh, actually two treats. First of all, if you wanna see my buys and sells and how I'm playing this market, you can get access to the Patreon. Go over to the Discord through there. You can see my buys and sells. You can talk to me and my community members. We'd absolutely love to have you over there. If you wanted to do technical analysis like I do, there's also a link for that. So besides that, the big treat, the real treat for you here is the technicals on Apple. So one of my... Uh, Discord members, one of my community members asked me to put in the in the technicals for what I saw happening with Apple. Well, I know this looks like a mess, but bear with me here. Uh, I'll, I'll pick through it. We'll make it easier to look at here. We are in a bear channel. That's the white lines that you see coming down through here. And we have resistance areas and support areas and some free fall zones. We actually stayed pretty much inside this support area. I did have it at 216. I did move it up to 219. So 215 and 219, I widened that range in here to adjust what I was seeing with the price action. And so two, two, uh, 217 to 218 is about where those prices are really getting mixed up. Uh, we have bulls coming in at 215. We have bears coming in at 220 to push that price back down. So that's something to look at on that. We, they have earnings coming up, by the way. Now, mind you, that's not the end of the treat. I have more of the treat for you. I'm going to get to it in just a moment here. Uh, their earnings are on Thursday, August the 1st. All right, so now for that treat part of things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the technicals for right now, and I want to show you uh, what we're getting more recently on the chart, and I'm going to stretch this out and really expand it because this is new as of today for what has shaped up for this. 
I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Now, mind you, the technicals are gonna pop back up. I'm actually just going to remove all of them and, uh, and I can always recreate them as I want to do so. And plus I do wanna give more relevant near-term technicals on this anyway. So in that update, I'll get it. But here's brand new stuff right uh, in front of your eyes. We actually have a consolidation pattern happening for Apple. And if I can click the Ray tool right there we go. There we are. So on the hourly chart, look at how we're narrowing down. And right in the middle of that is right about 218. Breaking to the upside of this thing is bullish. Breaking to the downside of this thing is bearish. And you can see the RSI uh, right in here. Let me really expand that so you can see it. Traveling pretty much, a, it's a little bit heavier on the bearish side than it is on the bullish side. And being an intraday measure like the hourly chart that we have here can really be anybody's game. Now, mind you, that's out to Monday where we could see that go, but none of the big tech reports until Tuesday. Uh, I think a few, uh, one of them is Wednesday, I think, and then Thursday for two others. So uh, that's what we're looking at. Like I said, for Apple, it is on Thursday the 1st. Uh, that's what we're looking for. In the They're all in the after hours. So let me go to the big tech watch list that I have here. Google already reported Microsoft. Microsoft is on Tuesday the 30th. And if we go to Apple, we already went to that. Go to Amazon. Amazon is on Thursday the 1st. Meta is the other one to report. And they are on Wednesday the 31st. So those are the dates for you. And those are going to be absolutely enormous in terms of catalysts for the market, in my opinion. And they're also going to be absolutely enormous catalysts that we have coming up for NVIDIA. So guys, for that hourly chart for Apple, that consolidation pattern, we could break to either side on that. The big thing after getting outside of that support zone that I showed you where we kind of danced around the past two days, the big catalyst to that is the earnings that they have coming up, even though it might not even take that long because they don't report till Thursday and we still have Tuesday and Wednesday earnings uh, for other big tech companies as I just showed you. So Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments from this video. What stocks are you interested in? What do you like that I said in this video? What, what do you think of that darn joke? That was really something. I was really proud of that one. And then if you want to see my buys and sells, and if you want to talk to my community members as well, over in the Discord, that link is available down in the description. And like I said, that technical analysis trading course is also down in the description for you. Anytime they'd like to click that, sign up and bring power to your portfolio through technical analysis trading. Thanks for watching, guys. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning. And we'll see you in the next video.